Welcome to the shop of Tom Blackshear. I'm now getting ready to do another 1987 Reyes style Flamenco Negra. The last one turned out really uh, excellent. So I'm going to try for another one and see if it was just a fluke or something that I can control and uh, to really be a, a great guitar. Um, this, uh, this will be the back that's a fairly straight grained back and over here these will be the uh, goto machines that i'm going to use for it uh, a little bit more expensive style of goto also the sides here are fairly straight grain so i'll have a straight grain side the colors match perfectly and that's a good thing, you know, I'm, uh, I'm happy that uh, I've got these uh, color match pieces in. Uh, this will be the neck that I'll be working on. This uh, neck I got from LMI. And uh, I think uh, they had ordered about 50 necks from Manuel Adelid in Valencia, Spain. So this is one of the necks that I'll be using. It's 655 millimeter. Uh, and that's uh, the scale length for, I think this neck actually will fit a 650, 655 in that range. Uh, so any of you who don't want to fool with necks and have to build necks and things like that, you can go right to LMI and get a neck like this and it's uh, rough shaping and then finish it off uh, you know with very little effort uh, later in your own shop so I like this idea of not having to do so many uh, labor intensive work and uh, the neck is one is very labor intensive for me uh, this is a start so this is where we'll go from here and I'll keep you posted thank you for watching welcome back to the Workshop of Tom Blackshear. This is the uh, purfling binding we're going to use. I don't know if you can see it. But okay, careful. There we go with the sides. I haven't done anything yet. The neck's still there. I haven't gotten to that yet. And what I'm doing right now is gluing the back together with uh, my uh, little. Uh, Thing that I got from LMI in California. It works really well. This is the uh, binding purfling that's going to be in the back and it'll be all around the uh, guitar. That's what the whole unit looks like. Then we'll pan over to say the top. Now the top is got a lot of flitch in it but I think it's going to be a beautiful top it's real tight grain and this is the uh, this is the 87 Reyes pattern that we're going to put on the top so this is where it's at right now uh, tomorrow is another day we'll we'll try to get videos by daily or every two or three days uh, you know minimum anyway thank you for watching
This is just a simple jig that holds the neck sturdy to where I can get into it and uh, do a little rough shaping. After I get the rough shaping all the way centered, then I'll start doing a little bit lighter techniques with the hand. Thank you for watching. Hello, welcome back. This is getting to be a little bit uh, uh, hard to do. I got the heel done like this. I could carve it like this, you know, no problem. But when it came to do the stuff right here, it just chipped off and I don't, I've never seen a piece of wood like this. But anyway, what I had to do was I had to go to the store and buy one of these. And when I bought one of these, I could get in and do this. And carve it real nice, you know, have a real nice curve to it. But this, uh, this actually works pretty good. My son, however, it works on a step pedal, variable speed. And what I had to do is get my son to come over and he took the variable speed uh, pedal and he's gonna put a rheostat on it to where it'll just go. I can push down on the foot and it'll just go a certain speed, a little bit slower speed, so it'll work better. Okay, now let's go into the uh, shop. Of course, uh, of course, doing the doing the Reyes head design is easy enough. There's no problem there. You know, I got that done. You know, a little spool, uh, up and down spool sanders uh, get this in here just fine. Not a problem. Okay, now put this down and go over here to the top. Now the top. I put the rosette in and I thickness the top, but I'm going to thickness it just a little thinner. But I wanted you to see the rosette. It went in very nice. And if you look at this uh, coloration on this and the design, it'll start to move on you if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, it's just that kind of a design. This is my own uh, personal design here that I had made up years ago. Okay. This is the back. I've already went ahead and glued in the middle brace. But that's as far as I've gotten with the back until I start doing some other things with the top. Thank you for watching. Okay, this is the top. This uh, little piece here is already glued in and it's sanded pretty good. This right here is the uh, regular bracing pattern for the sound hole right here and then this over here if you look at this this is just uh, held down it's already the braces in now the next thing I'll do is cut the sound hole I'll cut the sound hole uh, around and then shape that and then shape the uh, bridge uh, brace underneath and then the next thing after that, I'll put the struts in. Now the fan braces will go in after that, and then the horizontal braces will go across this way, and the top will be done. After that, I'll bend the sides and uh, 
you know, then we'll start putting them into the the neck. Now the neck here, I've got this pretty well finalized by hand, as you can see. There'll, there'll need to be some more hand work done here. On the on the head, I've pretty much finalized the head, but I've got to uh, take a little bit of uh, wood out around the sound hole to kind of soften it up a little bit around there. This particular uh, neck that I got from LMI, uh, the it should be a, down about here on the opening and a little bit more narrow. But they did that because uh, they feel like it's more universally acceptable. Uh, but this is not quite the Reyes head style. But it'll do because uh, mechanically it'll work just fine. Then this sides go into here. Then this uh, be finalized and softened out quite a bit right here. And then that's. Uh, like I say, the next thing we'll do is bend the sides. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome again to the workshop of Tom Blackshear. Uh, I'm just about through with uh, strutting and finishing out the top. And what I wanted to say is I'm not putting the inserts here like I did on the 2003 model. I'm keeping this free of the, the little inserts because I'm making the top thicker. Generally, these fan braces here are a little bit high on this end right here, and they go a little bit low here for the treble strut. These struts are pretty much the same thickness and height all the way across. And I'm leaving this uh, strut just a little bit thicker on the base side to sort of uh, see what happens. And if I have to take the strut down a little bit after I string the guitar up and has it have it plain, then I'll go ahead and remove a little bit off the top of this strut here. The finger, uh, with with everything that's going here, it's about, it should be about a quarter inch high in here, tapered up to about this position here. And same way with this over here. Now these uh, horizontal braces are about nine sixteenths high. And that goes for this and also this one right here. And they're both about a quarter inch uh, high when I get them finished off. Uh, <clears throat> The idea is to relieve just a little bit off the struts, you know, toward this bridge strap in, in front, just a little bit, and I relieve it just a little bit here. And uh, the way I do that is just take it I'm not doing any sanding now because I finished it. And I'm going like this, just a little bit right here. Now this relieves the strut just a little bit and allows the bridge to rock forward and tighten up. And the top, more or less, the top tension improves at this point. Uh, what I want to do is maintain the top, uh, the key of the top to be about G, F sharp. Which, with the thicker top, it is now because of the little... Um, the height adjustment on the struts is less on this one than the 2003 model. So that's about it, except uh, we'll turn this over and let you, you know, you can see the, the rosette again. I think it's going to be a beautiful guitar. The grain of this top is just exquisite. And uh, the moldy rays really shine on this particular top. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the workshop of Tom Blackshear. Uh, this morning we're going to 
I take the clamps off the end block that's been glued on to the sides. And the sides are already bent now. The next step will be to put the the neck into the top of the guitar panel here and then from there I'll put the lining in and then after that the top goes on. But what I'm trying to figure out is I've always put the top on before I put the end block lining in on the outside. Sometimes I go over and I have to use a thicker lining to kind of cover the cut mark that I made with a saw, not being that careful. So I think what I'm going to do is put the, the little end block lining here before I actually put the top on and just center it to the center where it is here and then center the top on the same edge. Okay, this is the end block that's been glued in. After this, I put the little center uh, design here in the bottom before I put the top on. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. I'm here in the shop uh, for a few minutes uh, taking this little video. I want you to look here. I've got it marked off as a center line right here. This is the center line and it goes all the way up to the neck and the neck and the center line and everything should be half and half on either side. I've already measured it so it's, it's a good center line. And what this does here, it goes all the way up the neck on the center line and then I have these little uh, screw-on type uh, uh, things to kind of hold the neck in alignment to where it doesn't go out of the line. And then I take this portion here and use the straight edge to go here, here, and also here with a straight edge. And everything is in line, the neck is in the correct position. So the next, the next thing I'm going to do is glue the two-part laminate together like that. I'm going to shape it on the bottom, you know, taper it and everything. Then I'm going to glue the solid lining in this way, and it's going to fill all the way over to here. I'm going to insert the lining into the neck right here, and then we'll go all the way down here and I'll take out a piece here and insert the lining into here to where the lining won't move or crack or anything. So that's about it for now, and I uh, hope to see you again in a few days. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the workshop. This is your solid two-piece lining laminate. What I've done is raise it up just a little bit here at the bottom and taper it down to where it's in line with the bridge flat with the sides at the, that point but I've raised it up a little bit because I want the top to uh, be a little bit tapered on, in back of the bridge okay now coming around here this is raised up a little bit this will be shaved down to almost flat condition to where the top will go out here in a regular uh, more of a flat style than a tape you know, it's not going to be like this. It's going to be pretty flat going across. Same way with this in front of the bridge. In front of the bridge is going to be pretty flat. But here, coming around with the lining, it's going to raise it up a little bit. And then I'll put in a piece right here to raise it at the bottom. Okay. Now, coming over here. I've got the two-part laminate solid lining gluing and as you can see I'm using uh, clothespins to couple the lining together in a glued position. I have this 
I have a piece of uh, rubber band here just holding the sides in to sort of a permanent style so when I put it on it'll be uh, after the glue is dried and everything it'll hold its shape fairly well to install it on the side of for the uh, base side of the guitar uh, it's coming along pretty good so far no real mistakes or anything like that so uh, hopefully uh, you know I'll have this done I'll have this off I'll glue this side in and then what we'll do is when I get the sides both sides uh, uh, the double laminate glued in then we'll install the top and uh, I'll show you how the top is installed it's already made so all I have to do is get this uh, these sides put into the guitar and once that's done then the top is installed and we can go to the next step after the top is installed of installing the back and that goes with the solid lining as well. Not a two-point, not a two-part lining for the back, just a regular solid lining. Thank you for watching. Okay. This this is uh, a straight board that has sandpaper on it, about 80 grit. And what I do is I bring it down around here to get this curve up to the bottom, and then it tapers down around the side like this and then I use this uh, I use this stick with sandpaper on it to basically smooth out the edges and as you see until it's even on both sides and when it's even on both sides it tapers up a little bit to this point here and then tapers down just a little bit and keeps going around on a flat flat side and it's really flattened from about this point here to this point here And then it starts tapering up to the bottom just a little bit to give some rise to the top at this point. Now the top is flat, so there'll be some bend in the top. It's not the top is not going to be totally flat from the sound hole up here it's going to have a rise in it, just a little bit of a rise, maybe, well, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. But across the front of the bridge, it's going to be totally flat, and it'll be flat here, and it'll be flat here, with just a little rise here, up to the heel. So this is the way I install my tops. I use a flat top, and then just glue it, 
to where the lining is guiding the curvature of the top. Remembering that from here all the way to the waist and beyond to here is going to be fairly flat. You know, going across the, the top it'll be flat. So, that's about it for now. It, uh, it's about ready for the, the top to be glued on, so I'll present that in uh, the next installment when I can explain how the top goes on. Everything is going good. Uh, oh, there is, there is one thing. On the straight edge, it will come down and meet about an eighth of an inch drop, eighth of an inch drop here on the, the end block. So you can see that the neck is raised just a little bit on a taper to where we can use a smaller or a thinner bridge. It won't be a high saddle, it'll be a thinner uh, drop, uh, it'll be a saddle that'll be dropped in more to a flum where you can use it for a classical or a flamenco edge. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. This is the top already glued in. What I've done here is left it a quarter inch high on the scallop. But in the center, from here to here, I cut it down to about a half inch high, one half instead of nine sixteenths. And then again, a uh, quarter inch high here at the uh, outside. On the top transverse bar going across, I kept it about nine sixteenths high. So that's not a problem there. I'm lifting I'm lifting the neck just a little bit to where it conforms to the top angle, you know, the, the neck going into the top. And of course I've got it uh, anchored down here with, uh, you know, to keep it straight at this point here. Okay, everything is uh, going pretty good. I've got the, the lining, the solid lining, glued in to this side and then this right here is loose as you can see it's loose so I'll, this will be glued in next and then at that point when I get all the lining situated then I'll put the back on and then we can start again you know explaining how I fit the back to the sides but everything, as you can see, is uh, laminate for the top and solid lining for the back, you know, without a two-part laminate. And, of course, the fan braces have, like, uh, On the, on the treble side, the fan brace is just a little thinner going this way, and it's a little higher going toward the back. On the brace, on the base brace, you've got it just a little higher from the top to the bottom, and I'll adjust that if it needs any adjusting by going in and, uh, you know, taking either a little off this end here or go a little bit deeper base. I'll take a little bit off this end here, you know, and graduate thin toward a little higher in the back. Just depends on uh, what the sound is going to be doing when I string it up. Thank you for watching.
this is pretty much the uh, top the way it's looking and together with the sides everything is uh, about ready to install the back and or fit the back and then we go over to where I'm now gluing the braces on the back making headway folks after all this time now the braces go on the back and probably after Christmas sometime uh, we'll fit the we'll carve the braces and everything and shape them and then fit the back to the the sides and get that done and then we'll start with binding purfling and uh, just keep going with uh, the back and the top and then bridge fingerboard string it up and there she goes okay welcome back to the workshop of you know who This is rough cut. This is before the sanding of the back. This is just, uh, I've got the, I've got all the uh, binding purfling done for the back and the next step will be the top. This, this has to be shaped and sanded. Anyway, thank you for watching. Welcome back to the shop of Tom Blackshear. This is the completed top and the back on the purfling binding have to be uh, this is the rough shaping it hasn't been sanded yet same way on the other side Here's the rosette. Everything uh, went perfectly aligned with the rosette. Top sounds really.